Right. <clears throat> right. So we have the function um, shown here, and if the line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote to the graph of f, then b equals. So um, if y equals b is going to be a horizontal asymptote, then that means that as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, the graph is going to approach this horizontal line. So essentially, we want we want to see like what the behavior will be when um, x is very, very big or very, very large. So one way to do this is just to expand the top and the bottom by multiplying. So we can go x, we just multiply this out. So we go 2x squared minus 3x minus 8x, so minus 11x minus 4 times negative 3, so plus 12 square x minus 1, you'll get x squared minus 2x plus 1. So one technique to um, determine the end behavior, we call it, is to divide each term by um, the highest powered the highest powered um, variable. Or you can think of this as like, you know, like, like what's going to dominate, what's going to like overpower the other one. So if we were to divide each term by x squared, 2x squared divided by x squared, you would get just 2. Um, 11x divided by x squared will be 11 over x. 12 divided by x squared is 12 over x squared. x squared divided by x squared would be 1. 2x divided by x squared would be 2 over x and plus a 1 over x squared. So um, we want to see like what is going on when x like goes to infinity. So if you're going to plug x in, in if you're going to plug a very, very large number for x into these expressions, what happens is this goes to 0 because 11 over a billion is like 0, 12 over a billion is like 0. So all these terms over here, none of these matter. So what really happens is that you're really just going to divide the coefficients, the leading coefficients by each other, so 2 over 1. So the asymptote will be the equation where the value of b will be 2. All right, the base of a solid is the region bounded by the x-axis in the graph of y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. For the solid, each cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis is squared. What's the volume of the solid? Okay, so let's just draw like a sketch of what's going on. So we have this, if we have this, we should know that this is going to make a semicircle. It'll, it'll intersect the x-axis at negative 1 and 1. It'll be up here bounded by 1. So um, if you're looking at um, the, the solid that's going to be generated with perpendicular cross sections, you know, so it's going to be popping out essentially of the xy plane into the z plane. So um, you're going to essentially integrate this from negative 1 to 1. So let's first look at what the cross sections are going to be looking like. Cross sections perpendicular to the x axis are going to be like these rectangles. And they're going to be essentially popping out with the same height and um, width as you know the distance from here to there so let me actually draw like a so we could draw like a little three-dimensional sketch we'll see how good this goes so let's pretend this is this is a z this is where it's popping out this is y this is x so we like our semicircle so a cross section would be like let's see if i want to make this make it easier if i have one like over here I want to draw what this would look like in these three dimensions. It would be, you know, essentially like this square coming out over there. Like that. And if, I'd, if I had one over here, let's say, it would be like another square going up like that. So it's, it's, it's some weird, like, like decreasing, like, square, like, semi sphere sort of thing. Anyway, so what you want to do is um, 
figure out the, the equation for the areas of each of these squares and integrate it from negative 1 to 1 in terms of x. So the volume of this would be set up like this. And the area of a square, you know, is just, are just the side lengths, you know, multiplied by the side length or the side length squared. So the length of these sides, let me draw an x, let me draw like a potential cross section could look like. The length of a side is just the distance from here to here. So it's just the value of the function, which is just going to be square root of 1 minus x squared. And this side length is the same thing. It'll just be the square root of 1 minus x squared. So the area of any of these squares will just be the square root of 1 minus x squared squared. So this whole thing squared. So when you square a square root, you're going to just get 1 minus x squared. The square root will cancel. So we're just going to integrate this. So we, anti, we find an antiderivative of 1, which is just x, of x squared, which will be x cubed over 3. We're going to go from negative 1 to 1. So we'll get 1 minus 1 third minus a negative 1 minus a negative one, you know, cube or negative one over three. So we've got two plus or negative two thirds and then we'll get one and a third, four thirds. So our answer will be B. All right, now we have a, let's say a function that's um, given by kx over x squared plus 1, where k is a constant. So we want to see if there are any values of k where the function is strictly decreasing on the interval negative 1 to 1. So let's see what the der derivative is. And then we want to see where the derivative will be negative on this intervals for values of k. So um, you can keep the k on the outside, you know, it's just, it's just a constant, so we take the derivative of this. Um, we're going to use product rule. So we can go f prime of x will be equal to k times the numerator squared, so x squared plus 1 squared. Keeping the bottom as our constant times the derivative of x, which is just 1 minus then the derivative of x squared plus 1, 2x times x. Again, using quotient rule. Cleaning this up, we get x squared minus 2x squared on top, so we're going to have k times a negative x squared plus a 1 over x squared plus a 1 squared. All right, um, so now let's look at this like, we wanna essentially see what values in this interval will this be negative. So, kinda of, kind of like think. No matter what value we have in, as x, any number squared is gonna be positive. So we know we're always gonna have positive value in, in the denominator. Um, so we want to see what values make this expression positive and negative. So we can look at negative x squared plus 1 being greater than 0. When is it positive? So then we studying this, we'll get that. Minus 1, we'll get that when x squared. It's going to be less than um, it's going to be less than one. Well, it's just going to do one step at a time. So negative one, take away one. But you divide by negative one, so when x squared is going to be less. Than, we switch the sign, so when x squared is less than one. So then, um, if that part is positive, that'll make that that'll make that positive when x squared is less than one then we need the k to be negative. 
because then negative times a positive over a positive will give you a negative overall value. So then if for k to be negative, it just has to be below zero. We just want it to be a negative number. And then so the answer will be a. Twenty-three. Alright, what is the following is the equation for the line tangent to this graph? So we let's um so it looks like we're gonna have an equation in point slope form, so um let's just write what it is. So point slope form be like y y minus y one equals m times x minus x one. So the equation for a line that's tangent, we first gotta find the slope of that line. So we want to find the derivative of this. So y prime Take the derivative of 3, that's just 0, this is a constant, minus the derivative of this integral. And um, when we differentiate an integral, this is basically using the second fundamental theorem of calculus. When the endpoint is an x or a variable, it's very simple. You just replace that variable with variable and expression. So it's just minus e to the negative x cubed. Essentially, you're just, you're just undoing the integration. When you differentiate an, integ an integration expression, you're just undoing it. So that's why it, it, it becomes whatever is in here. It's like adding one, then subtracting one, you're undoing it. Okay, so now we have the derivative. So let's find what the derivative is. At x is negative one, so y prime of negative one would then be negative e to the negative one times negative one, so negative e to just the one. So it's just this. So our slope is negative b. E. And then um, we can look at what points we can plug in for y1 and x1 or x1 and y1. So we find we know when, when x1 is negative 1, let's just figure out what y is. So when x is let me write, when x is negative one, y will be three minus the integral from negative one to negative one. And right away, when you're this is not going to be anything. This is just going to be zero. So this is, doesn't even matter. So y is going to be three. So when x is so we have the point negative one three. And so we can just write this as y minus three equals negative e times x minus the negative one or times x plus one. So our answer would be let's see B B. Right, which of these is the solution to the differential equation? dy over dx equals 5y squared with the initial condition y of 0 is 3. Okay, so here we're just going to integrate this and we're going to use separation of variables. Let's go get started. So let's divide by y squared. So we're going to get 1 over y squared dy equals multiply by the, by the dx equals 5 dx. Let's throw our integration operations there. Okay, so this is just the same as y to the negative two. So using the reverse or the anti-power rule, you're gonna get y to the negative one over negative one equals five x plus some constant c. And then um, let's let's work our way from here. So then, I like to get rid of this negative just to make it a little easier to work with. Let's see, like, so y to the negative 1 is negative 5x plus, so this constant is still going to be a constant, but it's not going to be the same because we're multiplying by negative 1. So we get this when we multiply by negative 1. And then um, we can use this initial condition, plug in x for, plug in 0 for x, and we should get 3 for y. So, um, we plug in this point, so you're going to get 3 to the negative 1, or just 1 third, is equal to 
zero is five times zero, zero plus C two. So your constant is one third. So then your constant symbol is one third. You're gonna get y to the negative one equals negative five x plus one third. And they're probably gonna to wanna to rewrite this so that the y is, you know, is in the numerator. So um just, so this is the same as one over y. So just kind of like multiply this by y by y and divide by this. Let me write it like this just to make it clear. So you basically just get y equals, it's kind of just flipping it over, one over negative five x plus one third. And it's probably, yeah, they aren't, they're not gonna have it like this. They're gonna have this one third looks like, um, multiplied by three, I guess, because that would be the one, this would be the one. So if you multiply this by three, or by three over three, so to speak, you'll get then um, you get three over negative fifteen x plus one. And so their answer will be D.